It's Monday, June, excuse me, it's Thursday, June 30th, and you're listening to the Geek News Central Podcast, sponsored by GoDaddy.com. Geek News Central is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. Have we got a great show lined up for you tonight? We've made a few changes. We'll talk about that here in a second. You know what comes next. Strap in. Here it comes. All right, people, I need a go, no go for the Geek News Central Podcast. Digital archive recorders. Or go flat. Microphone. Or go flat. Video feed. Go. Web browser. Go. RSS data stream aggregator. Go flat. Interflux totism suppressor. All right. I'm confused. Host readiness check. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. The Geek News Central Podcast is a proud member of the Tech Podcast Network. If it's tech, it's here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we are ready to go. Q Todd in five. Bucky, Bucky, who's got the button? Four. There is no cause for alarm. Three. Everybody hold on to something. Two. Just press the button. One. It's showtime. Aloha and welcome to the Geek News Central Podcast, coming to you as live as it can be from the beautiful state of Hawaii via the Geek News Central Studio overlooking greater Honolulu. Hey everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Todd Cochran. I want to encourage you to go over to geeknewscentral.com. Check out our great content. Of course, get out, check out the archive podcast available via the podcast link on the website. My show is not the only show you want to watch when you're over at GNC. You'll definitely want to check out the Gadget Professor and Robot Underpants. And coming this weekend will be the first edition of the Chrome Show, while the homepage of that website will be at thechromeshow.com. Don't worry, we'll have everything cross-posted at Geek News Central for you to check out, and there'll be a new feed available for you to uh, make available of yourself and to download. Well, I got a lot going on here, folks. Um, boy, oh boy, it's been a it's been a busy week uh, playing uh, basically dad and mom. Shoko was still off in Japan, and uh, no real update with her father. I do know that uh, he is still on life support. And we probably are going to be getting some decisions here in the next few days. But uh, at this point, nothing new. And uh, talked to her last night. And everything's kind of at the status quo at this point. So we'll keep you advised on that as time goes on. Of course, I want to give a warm welcome to the Ohana. All of you that are longtime listeners. All of you that are part of the family here. And of course, being in Hawaii, Ohana is family. So if you're checking our show out for the very first time, definitely. And when I say our it's yours and mine because I feel that you're an equal partner here at Geek News Central. So uh, I kind of call it in the plural many times. But uh, be part of the Ohana. Get subscribed to the show. You'll find a link to subscribing to the show in the second column of the website. If I can click the right button here, we'll bring that up. And uh, you'll see there an orange box. And basically all of the audio and video feeds for the various shows are right there for you to, to avail of. And you can uh, sign up via iTunes, Zoom Marketplace, or just uh, use the standard RSS feed. The great way to get uh, connected here. Um, of course, we'll want to make sure that you uh, have a way to connect with us. And you can do that by sending the show email or calling our hotline. That's open 24 hours a day, 365 days a year. And the show hotline is 619-342-7365. But recently, I think every marketeer in the country is uh, calling that line and leaving their one of those automated voice messages. So it, it's getting a little old weeding through those numbers. But if email is your thing, geeknews at gmail.com. And, of course, you can follow us as well over on Facebook. And we've got a Facebook page over there. So if you go to facebook.com forward slash geeknews, we're there as well. So I want to thank uh, just all of you for checking the show out. And, of course, make sure you get subscribed. The newsletter, if you sign up for that as well, that contains basically be I'll send you an email once the show is over, contain all the links and all the information about tonight's show, and that will uh, be in your email inbox. That way you can follow along via, you know, right from your email client or just come over to the website later if you need to. Well, I tell you, um, playing around tonight with the video and having made a decision uh, to do a couple of things, the first thing I'm doing now is instead of streaming the show live on the Geek News Central Ustream account. Uh, a number of us over at Tech Podcast are going to be starting to do our shows live at techpodcast.com forward slash live. And what we've decided there is to start to work and try to build a bigger live presence on that website. And we'll be adding shows over the next couple of weeks, and you'll see the full schedule there. 
So essentially what, I'm, what we're trying to do is give you an opportunity to have access to a lot more live content. Now, initially, when we're first rolling this out, it'll only be live during the actual scheduled times. And then during the rest of the time, it'll be basically the previous show that's been recorded there will be up and be available. But at some point in the near future, matter of fact, we've got some people working on it now, we'll go into a 24-hour rotation where there will be, um, if it isn't live, it'll be shows and replay. So that way you can go over there at any time and really get the most fresh tech content that's available. There'll be no content on the site. They'll be older than three or four days. So you always have the freshest content. And hopefully as time goes on, we'll be able to have live content on the show every, or on the site every day. And because we're dealing with individuals across many time zones, uh, everything on the schedule with over there at techpodcast.com forward slash live, the actual time zones are Eastern. So, of course, I come on at like uh, two, 2 o'clock in the morning uh, Eastern Standard Time, which is kind of funny. But um, you guys all know, being out here in Hawaii, that's just the way it is. That's the way the stream time comes up. As well, what I'm going to be doing is I'm making a switch with the TriCaster um, as of the Saturday morning tech show. This Saturday, the TriCaster will be used to push to my primary stream at Amazon. We've shook that thing out enough. Currently, the Amazon stream being shoveled by the machine down on the floor. And that uh, quality is not as good as what I can do, basically send directly from the TriCaster. So we'll be making some flipping of how stuff is being fed here from the studio, all transparent to you, uh, no matter what. You come to the site at geeknewcentral.com during the show or live.geeknewcentral.com. You're going to be able to catch the show. And if you want to catch other shows at Tech Podcast, tech, techpodcast.com forward slash live. So lots going on, and we'll be making some more announcements as we move forward with this. and and uh, get more guys on board. What the challenge is, is anytime you have 125 guys that are and gals that are all creating shows on their own dot coms, and they may have their own Ustream channel, it's very difficult to say, okay, now move your primary stream source from here to here. You can still have the embed up on your website, but many f folks go to maybe my even my Ustream site at Ustream versus coming to our homepage and vice versa. So it's going to take a little bit of time. So those of you that watch live, you'll always see it at live.geeknewcentral.com, but we'll also be up at techpodcast.com forward slash live. And it's just, you know, what we're trying to get everyone working a little closer together. And boy, sometimes it's like herding cats, but uh, it is what it is. Uh, but uh, a lot of fun course this is the uh the last show of the month and matter of fact uh for many of you it's already july 1st but um i want to thank our sponsors of course adt has been here a sponsor this month as long as long with godaddy of course i want to thank though and actually go to meeting was uh up until about the 6th of june was a sponsor here we'll be starting them sometime in in mid-june we've got a great thing coming in mid-june with with go uh, go to meeting some new stuff I think you're going to be excited about. But anyway, I want to thank the sponsors for being here, helping keep the lights on, paying the bills. Uh, we'll know the uh, essentially the results of the campaigns here in a couple of days, so I'll let you guys know uh, how well the support went for the month. And it is really, uh, you guys really do take care of me here, and I, I do want to thank you for the continued support of the sponsors. Hey, for those of you that are just watching the show, don't forget you can watch, me, watch the show on the Roku or on the Boxy, the Tech Podcast channel on either of those devices or you can get it almost on any glass and that's uh really the best thing about this show is you can watch the show almost anywhere um i do want to share with you a project i've been working on i don't know if i alluded to this at all on a previous show or not but living here in hawaii um there's some unique opportunities in putting together I guess for a better word, a network of Hawaiian entertainment. Uh, not being a native that has grown up here and being, you know, basically living in, in Honolulu now for, for 14 years. Um, sometimes, uh, you know, even at this point, I'm not really considered local. But what I'm working on right now with a couple of people here is putting together what I'm terming the Hawaii Entertainment Network. And the goal on this is to get a, a number of, um, I guess, talents together. It would, I would not be one of the talents, believe me. We're going to be doing stuff on Hawaiian culture, music, 
food, um, talking about uh, Hawaii destinations, lots of other, all kinds of cool stuff about all Hawaii um, entertainment, essentially, and comedians. And I've got some stuff planned on some special kinds of shows that will kind of be a, a mix of an, an Asian American fusion type thing. Um, it could turn out to be very, very big. And I'm taking a portion of every one of my days and putting some time into working on the paperwork on that. I formally announced it to some people here in Honolulu that I want to get this going. And uh, I guess it all depends on a couple of things. And I'm going to be uh, doing some meetings over the next couple of weeks with uh, people here in uh, in Honolulu. Kind of have an exploratory meeting with some potential talent and interested parties. Um, it's not something I can do on my own. I'm going to definitely need outside help. I'm going to need... Uh, hired help that's going to have to do this. So it's a big undertaking, a big financial obligation as well. So it's something I'm going to be working on, and uh, it's not going to degrade from what I'm doing here. The show is going to be continue to be uh, priority number one. Um, and then this also, and it, what I'm really doing is going to be finding the right people to run this thing uh, with me coming kind of in as a managing role. Because I have my obligations with Raw Voice and the eight thousand, uh, almost nine thousand podcasters over there, and everything else that we do, but uh, this is kind of a, just a new little thing that I'm I'm getting going here. We'll see how it goes, and if we're able to get it off the ground or not, um, tie in some of our infrastructure at Raw Voice to be able to help some of the stuff along that we've already pre-built and and leverage that. But uh, pretty excited, so we'll see what happens. And uh, just, you know, it, it is what it is, and it'll be what it will be. And if it's destined to be, I guess it will destined to be. But um, it's got my excitement level <laughs> up a little bit, so it'll be pretty cool. Um, this Saturday, we're going to probably do the Chrome show. May not be directly following the Saturday morning tech show due to I have to go pick up the kids at 8 a.m. They're doing an overnight thing, so I have to leave here immediately following the Saturday morning tech show to pick them up. But I will be doing the Chrome show sometime on Saturday, so come back here to the studio and shoot that. But uh, that'll be first edition of that. Been working on the format, so I think you guys will like it. All right, lots in tech tonight, so we got to get into that here in just a second. But, uh, of course, I want to thank GoDaddy for being a longtime sponsor here. And uh, GoDaddy really has had some great deals this month. Uh, by the time you guys listen to this show, those deals will be gone. So there's really no use in me sharing any of that information with you. But if you come over to geeknewscentral.com forward slash GoDaddy, and you're going to find all the promo codes there. You're going to find Geek5, where you're going to save 15% on any order, $20 or more. Todd20, where you save 20% on a one-year shared hosting account. Todd will save you 10% on non-domain orders. Comsale, $7.99.com. Comsale2 is for .com renewals. And uh, all kinds of different pricing points here and different promo codes. And you get to find all those at geeknewcenter.com forward slash GoDaddy. And really, that is the uh, the number one place to come to find all the codes so that you will not ever uh, really uh, be without able to save some money over there with our with our great sponsor, GoDaddy. Okay, um, let me look at my stack here and make sure I got through everything. Um, dun -dun -dun -dun, I'm way too far down on the sheet here. I think that's pretty much it for for regular content. I do want to say I, I was uh, I'm very very intrigued by a and it, it, some of you guys hate this guy. Some of you love him. Some of you think he's a he's a he's a quack. And so let's just you know put that aside. And it's who I'm talking about right now is Glenn Beck. He uh, I guess tonight was his last night at at Fox, and he's leaving. Um, to start his own network called GBTV.com. And I guess this is going to start in September. And he's building his own live internet network. And he's probably one of the biggest names to have done this so far. And this, I'm really curious to see how his model progresses, how his sponsorship packages come together. Um, because between him and a few other people that have started to build networks, you look at what Leo's done with Twit and, and the fantastic success he's had. You're going to have this uh, pure uh, come from TV guy that's uh, you know obviously a conservative slant. And he's going to have his thing. You've got uh, some other folks like Adam Carolla who's doing his live, and of course it has the podcast component as well. So it'll be interesting to see how all these models kind of start to form up. And it's nice to see that we're going to have some 
additional, I guess for a better word, leaders or people that are reaching, you know, going advancing into this medium and to see how much we can really get this live portion of this type of content up in uh, up and running. And I think it uh, has a huge potential. Um, time will tell, but it really what it boils down to is the face. It's the person behind the camera. It's the person that's being able to provide the, the, the entertainment and whether or not people think it's uh, worthy of their financial support and sponsor support and so forth. So um, I don't know. Love to hear you guys' feedback on where you think this whole live stuff is going, live internet uh, TV is going, and whether or not you think that individuals like Glenn Beck or Leo Laporte or, or Adam Carolla, where they can, mer you know, there soon when you go to your television, you're going to see, and hopefully Hawaii Entertainment Network and Tech Podcast TV, where you're going to see all those networks as options, and you're going to be able to tune in anytime and get content just like you do with CBS and Fox and everything else, if we can get the quality to the level needed to really, I think for a better word, suck people in and have enough uh, inspiring content to make it happen. I think that's really, it really boils down to, but I'd love to hear you guys' feedback on this and uh, just tell me what you think. And for nothing else, we'll see how their models pan out and whether or not the sponsors jump on board to, uh, to support these models. And I know Leo's done well with sponsors. Of course, he has some of the same sponsors we do um, here on this show and through our networks. But uh, we'll see as, if more come on board. I'm, and that's what I'm really excited about, to see if more come on board. Because once they go into that medium, then it'll be easier to go to their media buyers and say, hey, you're in here. How about this over here? And they're going to go, oh, my God, we didn't even know. And sometimes it's more about awareness. Okay, uh, speaking of awareness... You know, one thing that's very, I feel, rest assured is, you know, summer vacation here. The kids are having some time. Maybe they can spend time here alone at the house. Um, a lot, Many of you have latchkey kids, and you really, you know, they come home. They, you know, they get in the house. They lock the door. You're still at work. They're there for a couple of hours. You know, you tell them to lock the door, not go outside, not answer the door. But uh, really, I feel much more secure when the kids put the, um, alarm system here in the house in the stay mode and basically it's it basically alarms all the doors and windows but you still basically have the house protected so if something gets tripped the alarm goes off um, and it gives you some some level of protection and without the motion sensors while you're inside moving around and uh, you know this is the same type of service that my good friends at ADT provide you know who's watching your home when your kids are there or when you're there alone or, you know, it's uh, it's there's a lot of craziness going on in the world right now. So help protect your home with a security system monitored by ADT, the leader in home security. Just call my friends at Protect Your Home, who is an authorized ADT dealer. You can call now and get $850 of equipment and activation for free by calling one 866 778 3127. That's 1 866 778 3127. There is a $99 installation charge and 36 month monitoring agreement. So uh, between $35 and $99 a month, depending on what you get on the system. But again, ADT is the number one monitoring service in the country. Comes with the world famous ADT yard signs. Uh, monitoring charge, again, just about a buck a day. And you can save 20% on your homeowner's insurance. So uh, definitely give them a, ch a call, 866-778-3127. And, of course, I should have had this screen up, <laughs> uh, this one. Anyway, there's their number. I'll leave it up there for a few minutes. You guys can write that down, 866-778-3127. And we want to thank ADT for, for being a sponsor here at Geek News Central. Okay, um, lots of stuff today. And uh, whoa, I'll talk too long already tonight. Um. Let me go ahead and get right into the tech. This is going to make it hard for me to get the show done in the prescribed time that you guys, I promised to get you guys in and out on. And let me bring up the, uh, bring up Chrome browser here. And let's see, is that the right one? No, it's not. So there we go. All right, we're going to talk about, first off, is we're going to talk about Google+. And uh, very fortunately, I got an invite late this afternoon. I was able to play with it for about an hour. I know many of you are still waiting on invites, but let me go ahead and bring up Google 
plus and I just bring you into the main page here and really what it kind of reminds me a little bit of Google Buzz I hate to say that um, but it's not it's not Google Buzz so I've got um, I, I spent maybe an hour playing with this and reading the streams and the comment thread and uh, it's pretty interesting because you can break this uh, uh, stream down by friends, family, acquaintances, people that you're following. I have a business category. Um, I've got stuff broken up into um, to fans for like for those of you that follow the show. I've got podcasters broken in there, PR people, folks from Raw Voice. So, of course, a lot of these folks are not in the system yet. So as soon as they get in and start their streams, there will be information. But basically, you can break down discussions in this stream section by basically how you've got it organized in your circles. And probably this is where the really where the rubber hits the road. And I'll bring up the circles. And what I've got is I've got people, people in my circle is 69, people who have added me 19, and I have about 500 to find and invite. So you can see down here in the bottom where there are some circles. And if I hover over like acquaintances, it, it basically pops up, and then I can look there to, at different names. So here's an um, individual that I know. It's an advertising rep. I've got uh, some folks that Doug Kay is a, you know, is a friend of mine. we got Robert Scoble here and a variety of different acquaintances. And then I've got uh, family in another section. I've got podcasters. So all this is about circles. This is how you organize it in the system. So I've got my, my wife, my daughter, my kids who all don't have accounts yet, but I've already got them pre-queued into the system. So when they turn this on, it gets more. Now, if I want to look at who's invited me, I click on the people who've invited me and I can look through the list. So here's Norbert Davis. He um, is a, a podcaster. We've had him on the Saturday morning tech show. He's part of TPN. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to grab Norbert's um, listing and I'm going to drag him down here into the TPN pile. And what happens now is there's a little circle next to his name to show me that I've added him to a system. So we've got uh, Eric Beeler, and I think Eric is, I can look at Eric's profile, and if I want to be able to give some information on him, to figure out uh, exactly how the uh, relationship is, and I think Eric's a, a fan of the show, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put Eric in the, in the fan section. So I just drag him down, and I put him in the fan section. Now, if I've made a mistake and I put Eric in the wrong place, I can drag him somewhere else. I can drag him out of the circle and move him around as as needed. Um, here's Scott. Scott's a, a, an acquaintance. I'm going to drop Scott into the acquaintance area. Um, Jose, I don't exactly know how my relationship. So anyway, there is still a little bit of uh, homework you got to do on the relationships you have with people. And you can... Put them in the specific categories that you think that they need to be in. And um, this is pretty cool stuff. So these are people that have already added me to their circles. And so I have all my, the folks in my, and this is all of my um, import from my contacts on Gmail. And really, I have more, more uh, contacts in Gmail. I have 2,500 contacts. So I don't know why it's only showing me uh, 500 of them but that's kind of the way it is. Now, if I go back to the homepage of Google+, Plus, um, it shows me over here who's in my circle, gives me some suggestions. Um, there's a new thing where you can start a hangout. This is a real cool feature where you can do, um, basically, you can have the, uh, your, your webcam up and you can be in a kind of a, a cool chat room uh, where you can see each other. And then, of course, it's tied into Picasa as well. Now, I don't have any photos on Picasa, but I can look at all my friends pictures, stuff that they've uploaded and that they have linked into their system. So I can kind of get a, a their newest stuff. Now here is a Matt um, Luchak and you know different folks that have got different pictures. And then I can have, of course, adjust my profile. The about page is just like your, is the, same, is the page from your Google profile. So I have my full, full Google profile here. This is stuff that uh, has been in the Google ecosystem for a long time. Um, I can upload photos, I can do videos, I can share my plus ones, and this is when I plus one something when I'm on the Google search page. And then the buzz is still there too. So you've got the buzz link. 
So Buzz is tied in there as well, which is kind of interesting. And then it shows me all of my posts and the comments made by other folks. So here's my comment where I said, just starting to play with Google+. Plus. And um, one of my thoughts was it's a big drain of time on the circle management because you can spend a lot of time managing the circles. But I think once you do, and as you add people, it really kind of, I don't want to say compartmentalizes it, but I the folks that are I'm putting in those circles, they have no idea unless I tell them which circle they are. And I'm sure you can end up getting too many circles. Um, but for me... What I think I like about this the best is I can have this stream up. Now, you guys know that I am not always using, um, let me flip this back. You guys know that I'm not always in webmail. I, I still like using Thunderbird a great deal. But what it's, this is definitely going to push me to doing, and it is the only thing that bugs me is that this is only on my Gmail account. So I'm going to have to see if I, at some point, I'm going to have to link my, web apps account and get those kind of tied together a little better because essentially what I'll be able to do now is if, if I want, I'm just sitting here on the web page and the stream is moving, you know, update over time and you can kind of set some, I think the most hot topics kind of filter to the top, but I can kind of scroll through this from time to time and make comments. And then when I need to, I just click on the old Gmail button and boom, it loads Gmail. So here I am in Gmail, and then I come back to Google+, and I, I'm in here and can, you know, do what I need to do. Now, when something's new, it gives me a little red dot over here. It says, hey, here's a notification. Or if I'm back on the Gmail page, it gives me a notification up in the top right-hand corner that basically tells me, hey, something's went on here. So if I click on this, it says Patsy Terrell. Jose among yet Scott Mason and others have added you to Google Plus. And then Bruce Fisher and Ryan Ozawa and some other folks have commented on my post. So if I click on this link here and it shows me Patsy. Now I know Patsy, so she is an acquaintance. I'm going to add her there. So she gets added and I can kind of manage this a little bit better right from this section here. So if I decide I want to change Patsy's designation, and move her out of acquaintance, I can move her into a fan or I can move her into a podcaster, which she is. She's a podcaster. But you can also have someone in two circles. You don't just have to have them in one. So that, to me, was pretty cool. And so I'm able to select and manage this really easy. Now, Jay Clark, I'm not sure who she is. So I click on her profile, read the About page. There's not a lot of information there. I see who else she's following. She's following some people here in Honolulu. So I can go back and I can click add to circles and I can say, let's go ahead and add her to, um, let's just put her in the fan category and then go back to the main page at Google+. And there's no new announcements now. There's no new notifications up here. So it's interesting. It's, it's pretty cool on how it works. And those of you that are, that are listening to the show, you may want to come into the podcast and listen to the first uh, or watch the first 10 minutes of this demo if you're you know if you are listening instead of watching but i think the the key here to this uh and where this is going to be different from facebook is i don't stay logged into facebook i go into facebook i do a little few couple of things and i get out now facebook offered up mail before i didn't take any mail um now i'm trying to figure out how do i get my two or 3,000 followers on Facebook into Google Plus and get them organized that way. Um, I just think this is where Google's going to win here is Google already has a huge installed base of people using Gmail. And this is just going to be a natural extension on your command bar at the top. So I've got uh, Gmail, we got calendars, I've got the documents, photos, Google Reader, Web, and there's basically access to all of my Google services, YouTube, Maps, Shopping, Translate. So all the things are right there, you know, from this page. And I can, you know, do what I need to do and then come back to Plus as I as I feel it's necessary. So um, time will tell on this one, on where this goes. Now, some other folks have kind of weighed in here. And 
one of the favorite features of that the folks over at Technologizer said was that uh, their favorite Google feature was that it pesters you. It lets you know when uh, when something is updated. So it just kind of pings. It shows a little, and it doesn't send you an email. Or you can. You can set up your email. This is something you do have to do. Um, you come in on a very active thread. You'll get a lot of emails. So I set up my um, email preferences. So really, if it's not my thread and it's someone else's and someone makes a comment after mine, I don't get an email every time. So you definitely want to go in and set up your preferences. But I do like the pester folder when it's just sitting there and it's, it's part of your browser. And this is going to work out good for the Chrome. I can see work on the Chromebook. This is just going to be opened up. It's going to be another page. So uh, pretty cool. Cool stuff, if you ask me. Now, um, they're saying here, one the article over at allfacebook.com, talking about the uh, um, the one Google Plus feature Facebook should fear is that people are going to be staying on the site, just as I said, you know, because they've got their email opened up. So it's going to be natural for them to be hanging out on the page all day. Um there's also a lot of discussion about Google Hangouts. And basically, I can see now where there'll be times when I will go into Google Hangout and I'll say, hey, Angelo, uh, Brian, I'm in Google Hangout. I send him a little invite and the webcam will be up and they can come in and we can chat, pop in and out. Um, and there's also some of the things coming to go to meeting. They've got the ability to have the camera stuff going on. Don't want to talk too much about it yet. I think it's already been released, kind of in beta. It's been some word put on it. But it's almost the same thing. I'll be able to do, you know, video discussions when I need to with people. And, and you just kind of hang out. You have the page opened up. I don't even have to have it as an active box. Someone can come in and I can hear them on the speaker and I can jump over. The only thing you just have to remember is not to be picking your nose or doing something you don't want someone to see on the camera. So I guess that from that aspect is going to be cool. Um, from Google Plus. So anyway, that's all I've got on Google Plus. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Of course, I covered a lot of stuff here with this uh, real quick, uh, but we got lots of other news to talk about here that's really, really important. Hey, big article about is the FTC going after Twitter for bulldozing its ecosystem? And I wondered if this was going to happen. You know, Google was playing a little bit, um, for a better word, a little bit hardball with a lot of its uh, developers. And I guess this has finally just raised the ire enough by the FTC. And this is an article over on gigahome.com where, according to news reports, the FTC is looking into Twitter's business practices and specifically the way it has dealt with third-party developers who products and services rely on the Twitter platform. Now, they don't say they're doing an injunction, but they're requesting information. This cannot bode well for Twitter for playing hardball and I'm sure what's going to happen here is that uh, the FTC is going to say, okay, you, you had this thing all opened up, and now you're, now you're closing the ecosystem down. Um, you're, you know, you, you're not playing fair with the business model that you initially put out. If companies can change, but at the same point, the FTC is going to get involved here um, and are going to basically look at how Twitter has treated their third-party apps and services. And this is going to be ugly. They're going to find lots of material. And uh, I don't know what depth and level the FTC can go after Twitter, but uh, potentially they could. All right, there's more news about these TSA scanners. And um, this is epic, folks. Um, remember when the uh, Director of Homeland Security, uh, Ms. Janet Epitop, what's, how do you pronounce her name? You know, you know who I'm talking about. She uh, basically said that these uh, these scanners were safe, but the company that makes these had basically came back and said, hey, 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 hold up. And they were warning the Department of Homeland Security that they did not do product testing. They did not test EIT machines for safety, or I guess it was NIST. Who's NIST? N-I-S-T. I have to, maybe I have to do a Google here real quick and see who who NIST is. But NIST said they did not do, so I don't know if it was the manufacturer, said does not do product testing, did not test EIT machines for safety. NIST measured the dose of a single machine and compared it against 
the standard. So let me open this. Uh, let me do a quick search here for NIST. N I S T. I'm sure this is some National Institute of Standards and Technology. Okay, <laughs> so this is definitely a govy a govy uh, uh, a government entity, and they're the ones that uh, basically have told Department of Homeland Security, "Hold your horses. We don't want uh, you saying something here that uh, is not necessarily true." But um, and of course, this is, you know, adding to more angst here because the, the cancer cluster that they found at, uh, in Boston is raising, should raise a lot of questions. I, you know, you guys remember I was telling, and I still tell the TSA agents, hey, where's, where's your dosimeter? Where's your radiation meter? How come you're not wearing one? Oh, sir, this, is, this thing is safe. You know, this is not, you're not getting radiated. It has radio frequencies. It's not radiating you. And, you know, you, you're like, hey, guy, why don't you go Google radio frequencies and, you know, then compare that with enough power to radiation and how they actually, <laughs> unbelievable. But anyway, NIST told DHS to stop misrepresenting its work and suggested that if DHS agreed that it wouldn't call for a USA Today to run a correction on a piece where the Director of Homeland Security uh, Director was making these claims to the newspaper, basically saying they're safe and we've tested them. So, um, wow. And the folks over at Tech Dirt have, a, have the actual um, article that has been released in the emails that went back and forth saying, don't do this. Um, so don't walk through these scanners. I'm telling you straight up, don't do it, okay? You ask for the pat down. Yes, it's a pain in the butt. Um, but, you know, well, if you're only, you know, as, fly, as as many segments as I fly, you guys know, I don't feel safe doing it. Right, Haven. They just continue to be, oh, man. It's just like they keep getting punched in the face. You just wonder how many times before they get a knockout. But the court is uh, now saying, basically, the right Haven saying, hey, blame our clueless lawyer, but don't sanction us for failing to name Stevens Media as an interested party in all these lawsuits. And they basically are trying to go back now and restack the deck and do new agreements and do – in, in the court, and, and the, he used a specific word here, um, and it was – what did they say? If I could find it, it just really told me how the judge felt. Oh, man, it's deep here in this article. I read the whole thing. I, I thought I had it highlighted, what I wanted to share with you. But basically, the judge says, hey, don't try to, you know, make good now. You know, this is, this is you know, what you did before and the agreements you had in place, you know, at the time that you did these lawsuits, that's, that's where things, that's where the line in the sand is, you know. And to try to fix things now that you're down the road and you've filed these lawsuits and you've left this group's name off their Stevens media off the uh, off the lawsuits as interested parties and blah blah blah. Believe me, I'm not a lawyer. Even though I did uh, uh, do some uh, mock trial stuff in high school, that was many years ago. But um, this judge just keeps pounding them in the face, and it they're going back for more, and they may end up paying a lot of money <laughs> or the the lawyer firm being sanctioned and whatever that turns out to be. I don't know. On a more serious note, something that can really affect those of you in the European Union or in a European Union country, it appears that um, the EU Council is trying to push through the ACTA without much scrutiny. Now, last month, there were some folks at the EU, and they're saying, hey, hold up, we need to review this, and we want to make sure that it, it's good with the uh, existing law, and there's not going to be any issues, and this is going to... You know, that we can agree to this, but it appears that the Council of European Union is supporting signing ACTA without any further review. They're saying ACTA is a balanced agreement because it fully respects the right of citizens and the concerns of important stakeholders, such as consumers, Internet providers and partners in developing countries. Consumers had nothing to do with the writing of this document. Consumer advocacy groups had absolutely nothing to do with the writing of this document. Internet providers had absolutely nothing to do with the writing of this document. 
Who had the right, who helped write this document? Copyright holders and government groups. So here is some challenges. You, those of you that fall underneath these EU rules, and I don't fully understand how this whole thing works with the EU, but uh, the EU Parliament is uh, set to act on this thing. And um, this is crazy stuff. Be aware. All right, I have the link up in the show notes for you to check out. But uh, I'm sure they're going to ram this thing down our throat here in the United States, too. I can't imagine them not. All the stuff that they're doing recently. Anyway, email me at geeknews at gmail.com as well. There was a good article over on lex18.com. And what intrigued me about this was the technology that has been used. There's a software developed by an Israeli team that's offering new hints about what researchers believe to be the multiple hands that wrote the Bible. Now, the thing that I'm, I want to um, focus on here is what this software does, and it'll do this on any book, um, on any text, but they chose the Bible to, to do their initial studies with, said that the new software analyzes styles and word choices to, to distinguish essentially different parts and to figure out who where one writer started and one or one writer stopped and another writer took off and so forth. And what I found completely fascinating about this article was they, that um, scholars and so forth had spent many, many years kind of dissecting and doing this work on their own. And they had kind of come up with a, you know, a, a basically an outline of the number of writers and so forth through, through the Bible. And, what took many, many years and many, many people, this uh, software did almost instantly. And um, so they are there. And the thing is, what's kind of cool is that it lines up with what the scholars decided. And they've tried to trick the software and, this, and the software's, you know, been able to detect changes. So um, this is pretty exciting stuff. Now think about this down the road. What happens when this technology is brought into colleges, into academy, into, uh, into businesses and stuff, and where now if you're a student and you write a paper, they've got some software out there that does comparisons looking for um, basically stuff that you plagiarized, and it can pick that stuff out, and if you haven't properly referenced it, you know, you haven't quoted it right, and give attribution and all that stuff back, you know, schools take that very seriously now and they, they'll come after you with a hammer. But imagine what happen will happen when they start using this type of software on any type of paper. And what basically it will tell, it's going to tell people, yes, you are the person that did the original work. And I can see all kinds of applications for this. Um, and I'm sure the criminal justice system is going to love to get their hands on this to look at different writings by different people and different sites. Boy, I tell you, they are starting to learn some very deep stuff about the human psyche. And just by the words we pick and how we write and how we phrase stuff, um, and they'll be able to tell. Pretty cool. It's really, really cool. Now, of course, they're going to know everything we write now. Everything is on the net. So and there's going to be a record trace back to us. And it's, you, our, you know, our, you know, our people that are four or five generations uh, down the road, they're going to be looking back at uh, Todd's work and my kids' work and my wife's work, and and uh, it's going to be a cool time for them later on, unlike the, all the digging that we've had to do to find information. But uh, this is pretty cool software anyway that they've uh, been able to come up with. I have a link up in the show notes for you to uh, to check out. Some software I want you to check out is an application called Media Mall. It uh, basically brings DVR to Internet video. And you can, you can basically, this is going to be a paid app, ultimately. It's going to be about 5 bucks a month. You're going to be able to do YouTube, MTV, BETV, Vivo, Pandora, Amazon, Videos, CBS, variety of different sites. And you're going to be able to DVR stuff right into your computer. This is totally cool. Can't wait. And I'm hoping <laughs> that somehow we're able to get this content saved and be able to put it on a media device and go with it. Um, they're saying right now it's wrapped in DRM, so I don't know how this is going to be cool to try out, but uh, definitely check out Media Mall 
It's Play Later. Media Mall's Play Later. And it's actually, that's the name of it, Play Later. Brings DVR to, uh, to internet video. Pretty cool stuff. So I'm excited about that. Hey, those of you that do use Gmail, Gmail's going to get a new look. They're uh, getting ready to roll out the new, uh, the new and improved Gmail. And uh, I'm pretty happy with the way it is. But when I saw it, I thought, hmm, that kind of looks a lot like uh, the motif that they've used at uh, Google+. Plus. So I guess I'm not surprised. So they've changed the fonts and the, uh, the layout of the website. Hopefully, it's a lot easier to deal with, uh, with tags and so forth because I tag everything and uh, put them in specific buckets. But uh, anyway, that's what the new Gmail look. You'll be able to revert to it as well. That, and there's a, actually a, um, a link in the actual article that show you how to revert to the old Gmail look if you don't like the, uh, the new one. Well, the hits keep on coming. Sony, boy, oh, boy. Sony has uh, got the Department of Justice uh, looking at them on their batteries, They're specifically their camera batteries. You know, when it comes to... See, I've got uh, two Sony cameras right here. And the camera, I mean, the price that's on the... Um, wow, what was that? Oh, okay, I know what it is. Uh, text just came out on my cell phone. Um, the, the price of the uh, battery on this specific camera right here, I think is $165. And I'm going to tell you, it, you can't buy very many of those without going broke. But uh, making it, it's that thing is like two feet away, and it's still buzzing. The uh, did you guys hear that? I can hear it. It's basically, when the cell phone gets active, it bleeds through the, the microphone. Um, but anyway, I guess the DOJ is looking at them for price fixing um, and some heavy-handed tactics that Sony's done. So we'll see where this goes, but um, I hope the price on these batteries go down. They've been crazy expensive. Now, Facebook is uh, trying to uh, get some excitement going as well. They're saying that they're going to have some sort of an announcement next week, and uh, the suspicion is it may be an iPad app. You know that they've only got an iPhone app right now, so maybe we'll finally have an iPad app. FCC is also moving forward towards implementing net neutrality rules, and I'm sure this will open up all kinds of lawsuits, but... Uh, they're finally taking steps to implementing the stuff that they talked about back in December. So the FCC took uh, the procedural step towards publishing the controversial rules in the Federal Register. And the FCC said that they plan to send a Paperwork Reduction Act notice to the Federal Re Register and White House, Office of Management Budget, one of the final steps before the rules are published. So I'm sure as soon as that happens, um, there will be lawsuits galore. So stand by on this one here. Now, the Federal Trade Commit. Oh, I already talked about that. I got that double in here. Hey, how many of you like uh, online uh, poker? Full tilt poker? I've seen this uh, full tilt poker badges on those, you know, those tournaments. Well, online gambling site Full Tilt Poker has lost its license. I don't know if that means it's been shut down, but a bunch of people have been arrested. So, uh, are any of those poker sites even available anymore? I, I know I've got some aunts and uncles that like playing those sites. Maybe not those specifically, but uh, they uh, have to ask them. I'll see them over here over the 4th of July weekend. Security researchers discover an indestructible botnet, and this is amazing. Uh, Microsoft is uh, basically even kind of throwing their hands up too. Uh, the 4.5 million PCs that is underneath this botnet's control over the last three months is, uh, in effect, the result of what's called the TDL virus. And the security people are saying that this botnet is very sophisticated and they feel it is going to be near impossible to uh, shut this botnet down. And uh, the work that went in behind the uh, software that's running this, getting into uh, Microsoft very, very deep, almost to the point where you now, in order to remove it, you actually have to rebuild your machine completely. It's not like you're going to uh, uh, get an antivirus program and get this out because it, it attaches itself to the master boot record. And um, here's, the, here's the crazy stuff. The majority of victims, 28% of the U.S., 7% in India, U.K., 5%. And a small number, small numbers are in France, Germany, and Canada, and the rest is all across the rest of the world. But... Um, they say that this thing is going to be near impossible shut down. So scary stuff. 
that they can control 4.5 million computers. Hey, on the health side and a little bit of techie as well, there's a new paper out from the CDC um, basically talking about emerging infectious diseases that makes a pretty provocative claim. He says there's a, they're basically saying there's enough similarity between drug-resistant genes in E. coli carried by chickens and E. coli infecting humans that the chickens may have may be the source of it. So in other words, what we're seeing here is drug-resistant genes have been carried over from probably eating chicken. And, um, you know, here in Hawaii, very hard to get range-fed chicken. But if you ever get it, you know, just for the taste alone, if you eat a lot of chicken and you have the ability to get uh, range-fed chicken, that's chicken that hasn't had antibiotics put in it, has not... Uh, been on lamb that has been sprayed with chemicals. If you can get range-fed chicken, it is absolutely the best. My mom is able to get them um, down in Amish country in Indiana. Um, but if you ever get a chance to be able to get some of it, uh, with this type of crazy stuff being announced, um, boy, oh boy. But again, it seems plausible that uh, there could be some more evidence here of antibiotic use in agriculture having a direct effect on, on human health. And um, I don't think we should all, we should be surprised at all, but 876 of the patients tested um, five percent of them harbored what they call the ESBL genes out of 31 blood cultures and hospital labs, 74% contain ESBL genes. Out of the 262 meat samples, 30% harbored an ESBL gene. Broken down by type of meat, there was an ESBL in 80% of chicken samples, 5% of the beef, 2% of the pork, and 9% of the ground or otherwise mixed meats. This is insane. So I guess maybe I don't, completely cooking isn't going to fix it here. But um, this is nuts, and I'll have the link up in the show notes for you. I guess we shouldn't be surprised, and uh, I guess the vegetarians are going to tell us, told you so, told you so. Well, ISPs now, the, next, the latest tactic is where ISPs are going to be told to play cop, play copyright cop. Um, a major internet conference today that ended in Paris resulted in the publication of what's – and, of course, they, they had this um, conference for just a couple of days, and they were able to come out with a, a publication. And, like, this wasn't written before the conference, but it's called The Communique on Principles for Internet Policy Making. And um, basically, a key piece of these principles in this document involved the deputizing of Internet providers to become Internet cops – Cops would act on the behalf of voluntary agreements with content owners and other groups, not on national laws. Now, French President Nicolas Sarkozy, a major proponent of the Internet civilizing, kicked off the current push for the Internet net policing at the EG8 summit last month. And, of course, President uh, Barack Obama and UK Prince, uh, Prime Minister David Cameron agreed on the need for Internet rules of the road to be worked out at a higher level conference over the next year. So here we go. At some point, we're going to have our internet service providers no longer operating under the pretense that they don't look at uh, content and having uh, be protected by safe harbors, and they are going to have to start policing. You know this is coming. They haven't been able to get the site shut down through, well, they keep shutting sites down, and new ones keep popping up or peer-to-peer. -peer. The internet is has all types of access to get stuff of multiple different ways. So now they're just, okay, we're just going to cut you off at the source and we're going to get the internet service providers to do it. Um, you know, not uh, unsurprisingly, such digital rights groups like uh, the EFF said the document could encourage states to use internet intermediaries to police online content. In other words, they would actually use secondary people to policing it, not even the ISPs, but some sort of a, agency that would be watching uh, everything that you do on the internet it's uh wow privacy 
<laughs> it's gone. I mean, I laugh, but it's true to a certain extent here. We're we're at that point, folks. We really, really are. With uh with all this stuff going on. It just um doesn't it bother you? If it does, you know, drop me an email, geeknews at gmail.com, voicemail hotline six one nine three four two seven three six five. And you know, I'd love to hear what you thought, what your thoughts are. And um this is this is this is just gonna continue. And it's, you know, I, I, I guess we shouldn't be surprised at all in this in this activity. Now, I've been getting some emails from a company called Light Squared. Of course, uh, many of you have been probably familiar with what Light Squared are doing. Is Light Squared is trying to launch a 4G network, and uh, they want to do it with satellites and with towers. But this uh, Light Squared 4G network uh, frequency spectrum is right next to the GPS spectrum, and they've been having some trouble. Uh, basically, the GPS guys are saying, hey, 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 uh, this Light Squared stuff's going to kill uh, GPS signals. And essentially what has happened is the GPS manufacturers, you know, there's a very narrow frequency. If you just look it up GPS frequency, you'll see where the GPS sits at. It's a very narrow RF frequency. And essentially in order to make GPS devices cheap, what they've done is they've built receivers that have a little bit wider uh, receiver bandwidth. And, you know, they really haven't had to be real tight in their specs on the, uh, on the receivers. So they're susceptible to signal overlap or too much power next to them. Instead of having put on an RF filter, putting on a little, you know, just it probably costs a few pennies to put in that basically blocks any frequencies outside of the spectrum. They haven't done that. So now we've got Light Squared coming on board and they want to be able to put this new 4G network up in satellites and also on uh, ground towers. And basically, there's this big fight going on between the GPS people who are crying, oh, my God, they're going to ruin us. They're going to hurt us. Now, all of us love GPS. But with the light squared spectrum holdings between uh, 1525 megahertz and 1660, which is a pretty huge uh, width of uh, frequency, um, the GPS industry is basically so scared they've launched a coalition to save our GPS, actually launched a website. They're trying to fight Light Squared. And uh, I think Light Squared is doing the right thing and pushing back and said, hey, you you know, you can help mitigate some of this on your side too. So we'll see where this goes. But uh, this could be a huge, huge battle before it's, uh, before it's all over. I've got to show you this video of Neptune. This is a totally cool video and uh, let's see if I can get this up here and uh, play this for you let me pl uh, start it and then I'll, expl I'll explode it here absolutely amazing picture of Neptune and um, wow what an image absolutely amazing and essentially what's happened here is that you know there's been a lot of discussion about different planets and the, and the properties, and um, it's just uh, they're able to, you know, come up with some cool stuff on this. But I just, and if nothing else, you know, you can go read the whole article about all the science that they were able to gain from this, but I just thought it was a cool video. The colors and everything were absolutely beautiful. So link will be up in the show notes, of course, or in your email newsletter. Uh, movie Studios Paramount are adapt at sending out cease and desist orders, but apparently uh, from a movie here that uh, <laughs> it was, um, what was it? It was the name of the movie. Um, oh, man. I'm pulling a brain fart here. A Super 8. On the Super 8 movie, there was these cubes, and they look pretty, cu pretty cool, um, and they serve a very significant, uh, well, there's a very important reason for these cubes in the movie if you haven't seen it i'm not going to do a spoiler but these little cubes were kind of unique in their design and one guy reverse engineered those cube designs and he was going to have some of them printed or, or designed and made and sell them and paramount sent a cease and desist or um to the individual saying you cannot sell our movie prop and i thought to myself since when do movie theaters have intellectual rights on, you know, I can understand, you know, like action figures and stuff, but they have 
They're saying that this is completely the studio's property. You cannot copy this. It's our, you know, we're going to have someone else make these and sell them. Uh, I just thought it was a little, I was kind of surprised. I felt to my, at least I feel that they're a little overstepping their boundary here, but maybe I'm wrong. But um, anyway, they're, the guy's stood down. He's not going to do any of these. Uh, but I found it surprising that the, I guess it's, you know, all the extra stuff they sell after the movies where they make their money. Um, hey, the uh, we talked about Newsbin on the last uh, show, uh, but essentially BT, British Telecom, is basically saying, hey, we don't want to block uh, Newsbin. So there are basically the court actions in place here uh, with the uh, lawyers in high court in the UK claiming that Usenet indexing site Newsbin 2 was costing them millions of pounds due to illegal mov movie downloads. Newsbin did not go to pr um, defend themselves. I think they're worried about the court finding out who uh, who are the owners of the site. But anyway, um, BT's pushing back. And I'm, I'm glad they are. We'll see how the court decides so, though. For those of you that have an iPad, definitely, uh, if you haven't got Flipboard already, check it out. The new version of Flipboard is really cool. I've been playing with it. Um, really awesome. And there's a lot of new features here that, that they've added, and it's much more user-friendly. Those of you in California have already gotten your letters from Amazon if you're an affiliate basically terminating the Amazon affiliate program due to California requiring uh, companies to collect sales tax. So this is something that's happened in a variety of other states as well, but uh, California is the latest uh, state that has basically invoked sales tax collection on Internet purchases. And uh, so anyway, it's uh, Amazon affiliate program is shut down in California. Diamond has come out with a, a box called the Wireless Video Streamer. I've seen uh, the prototype to this at CES. Uh, this is a pretty cool box. I think it's going to be about 100 bucks. But this is a way to get uh, video from your computer to your uh, TV. And this is the first time I've seen, or I think I've seen a couple of these, but this one is uh, HD. So uh, they've had them in the lower resolutions. But uh, this is a, probably a good product for you if you're looking to do that as well as the folks over at Delarma have come out with a new GPS, which can send emergency SMS messages. It's called InReach. This is the newest uh, device from Delorma. They've been uh, famous for doing these, but this is the uh, smallest one that I've seen from them. Um, pretty nice little device. Oh, is, is the page going to load here? There it goes for you. And uh, basically, if you get in trouble, you can send out a text message, and it goes up through the GPS system, and, and uh, they'll send help. Uh, get your credit card out. Actually, um, if you've got one of these and you're doing a lot of hiking, they have rescue plans that you can pay insurance on to get for. So please consider that. If you're a Boxy user, and I know many of you are because you watch this show on Boxy, Boxy's cutting down on the clutter and they're going to be adding app categories. I guess they're adding up to 14 app categories. So we're going to have to make a few changes to our app as well to get in line there. But uh, they're cutting down the categories as well. Uh, they've uh, made s some additional stuff too, where uh, you can you can interface with a um, with your i with your iPhone to remote control your Boxy Box. So I have that link up in the show notes uh, for you as well. If you are willing to go in the cloud, Microsoft Office 365 is available. This was released on Tuesday. Uh, Microsoft released the finished version of their online Office Suite, Office 365. And uh, if you want to uh, check it out, I have a link up in the show notes for you. Pricing for business is 25 users less is $6 per user. I think this is per month. And I don't know what it costs uh, to use this uh, as an individual. But uh, you'll be able to do the beta. And you have at least 30 days to decide whether or not you want to move your Office product to, uh, to the cloud. Uh, Google Calendar has been updated as well. So uh, there's, you know, they're making changes across the board on a lot of the uh, uh, Gmail calendar, Gmail documents, all this, I mean, Google documents, Google Calendar, and so forth. So uh, this is, again, following along with the new design of Google+. Plus. So I'll have that link up in the show notes. It was an article by Lifehacker. Hey, uh, KL did an, a review at Geek News Central on uh, a new application he's been using is called the Hindenburg Field Recorder, and he uh, uh, used the, the light version of it, and the full version is twenty nine ninety five. but uh, pretty good review on this. If you want to do some uh, audio recording and have a way to edit it, 
Um, this may be a way to go for sixty six ninety five. You can also get the journalist version of that. And um, the only thing he wished that it would do is it would be linked to Dropbox. But uh, this looks like a pretty nice little audio recorder for those of you that may be looking one, for one uh, with, the, uh, with the iPad or with the iPhone. So anyway, pretty cool stuff and a good article there. Second article up at Geek News Central was talking about those of you that have an Android device and being able to um, force a new Facebook interface onto Android. If you haven't been able to get that new interface, there's a way to do that. And he walks you through on how to get the new Facebook interface on Android. So I have that link up in the show notes for you. All right, already running along on time here, but uh, some cool articles were on Engadget. was talking about uh, the folks over at Cisco are saying that we are a year away from having to start thinking about a zettabyte. So what is, what is a zettabyte? A thousand megs is a, one thousand meg is one gig. A thousand gigs is one terabyte. A thousand terabytes is one petabyte. No, excuse me, is a, is a terabyte. 1,000 petabytes is an etabyte. <laughs> 1,000 exabytes equals one zettabyte. I think they got some of the stuff flagging wrong in this article. You get the drift. I'll link up in the show notes for you here. Um, but anyway, I think they labeled something wrong there. It doesn't make complete sense. But anyway, um, wow, one zettabyte. And they're looking at that type of storage. It's insane. Uh, Google Plus for Android app is out as available as well. So I have that linked up. You can check it out. And I haven't uh, played with it on my Chromebook yet, but I'm going to. So we'll see how it works over there. Hey, Apple Thunderbolt cable has been gutted. And for the first time, a cable that's uh, 50 bucks, they're saying was worth 50 bucks. Um, this new Thunderbolt cable has all kinds of chips and components in it. And for the first time, uh, they say, yeah, it's probably justified. So I have a if you're getting ready to buy a new Mac and you need to get this cable, uh, probably best to just do it through Mac. Hey, Rim, boy, to talk about a company that has just been absolutely beaten down, you know, with the BlackBerry and this in their recent offerings. But uh, Rim has been handed an open letter from a disgruntled employee, and they responded. Um, but basically, this guy has said, "Hey, you need to focus on the end user experience. You recruit some new people." talk about uh, cutting projects to the bone. He just goes on and on and on. A lot of good advice for the management at RIM. We'll see if they uh, if they listen. Have you heard about the new UFO? Well, it happened in London. And uh, this is over, I know it made a variety of websites. I thought it was even on a news site as well the other day. But uh, John C. DeVork's website had it up. I'll play it here for you. You can watch it. It's. I don't think I'll play the whole, yeah, I'll play the whole thing and then we'll go right into the email from that. But uh, yeah, maybe I won't. I'll play just a segment of it here. Let's see if it'll actually play. Does it want to play? Oh, give me a break. It's queuing here. I've got too much going on. All right, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to play this. I'm just going to go ahead and link this in the show notes, and then you guys can uh, to check it out. But uh, they've already pretty much said this was a potential hoax, but uh, no one's claimed responsibility for it yet, uh, for maybe a potential movie launching next year. Oh, of course, MySpace, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, they sold for, what, $30 million or $25 million? Well, half the employees have already been fired or let go. So uh, this is not surprising after News Group let them go. This is a Robert, uh, uh, a Rupert Mur Murdoch failure. He, what, what did he invest, $560 million or something like that when he bought it? How would, that, how would you make feel to lose $530 million? Um, got a link here for a couple of things, talking about Windows Live, talking about uh, Hotmail being 10 times faster. I don't know anybody that uses Hotmail anymore, but if you do, you should see it being used a lot quicker. Um, good article over on ours, talking a little more in detail about the Amazon shutdown in, in California. Google has patched seven bugs in, in the Chrome browser, so you'll be getting an update for that. And how many of you that are students have had to deal with uh, uh, the Blackbird or Blackbeard as a interface? Well, some students got sick of it and they put together their own collaboration tools. So a pretty good article over on GigaOM on that. And it's nice to see someone take them to task. You know, Blackbeard has been at the predominant uh, school, um, basically school software or school online software that they use. So uh, these students basically said, hey, we can do better than that. And they did. 
Um, also, Delkin has come out with a new 64 gig SDXC card. Claims to be faster, fastest with a 45 megs per second reach. And they didn't put a class on this. They just call it the XCI-1 UHSI. So I guess it's a whole new class of, of SD card. All right, that's all I've got for regular content. Let me go ahead and bounce here into the email real quick uh, before I run out of time, which I basically already have. Hey, I want to uh, basically tell Susabelle, she's one of our writers at Geek News Central. Good luck. She's uh, packed up to move. She's got a five-day trip. She's uh, picked up a new job. She's uh, leaving St. Actually, uh, the I don't think it's going to take five days. Oh, we're packing a moving truck in five days and driving on the sixth day. She's going out to Longmont, Colorado. So if we've got anybody in Longmont, Colorado, we've got a Ohana member coming your way, uh, leaving St. Louis. So uh, she's busy packing up. We wish her safety in her trip. Hey, Google has announced a new, uh, I mean, Amazon announced new uh, pricing on their a lot of their products and services. And wow, they really... Um, been able to save people a lot of money and they're really scaring CDNs. Um, but I got an email from Tim that was basically talking about Amazon as well and the California Amazon affiliate stuff. He said, I like what Amazon did towards Texas when they tried sending them a tax bill. States like California continue to expand influence of programs and it comes to increased taxes or massive deficits. I wonder when it will all end. I use Amazon for everything I could possibly want minus groceries and save lots of money doing it through Amazon Prime. I love Amazon and their services. I know you do as well. I'm grateful that Amazon is standing up for these policies, and I hope that they know a lot of us are behind them 110%. That said, it will be interesting to see where all this goes. But I hope California backs down before they hurt themselves any more than they already have. Well, Tim, basically the governor signed the bill, so it's gone into effect. It's uh, it's not going to be reversed. And you got to understand, you know, they're trying to equal the playing field. They're trying to make the price what you can buy at a merchant locally and what you can buy at Amazon equal. And the you know, Amazon's had this advantage through internet sales, even with shipping. So we'll see where it goes. I think they're still going to be able to compete with them. Got an email from Nir. He said, hey, Todd, Waz is an Excel traffic app that will solve the German problems as well as in, your, in Hawaii. Try it. Um, so anyway, Waz, W-A-Z-E. Uh, Nir, I'll, I'll check that out and look for it. Um... Hey, Michael Dell um, is a, a podcaster over at Tech Podcast. He's also our support guy at uh, Raw Voice. He's got a new book out. He's got a book based on his website, flightradio.com. Um, and basically, it's called Flight Radio Book. And I have a link up to Mike's book. So definitely check it out if you're a ham guy, if you're, if you're, if you're, or if you work with the, um, if you're, if you're, you like Airedale stuff, uh, definitely check this out. I have a link up for it as well. I got an email here from Trucker Tom said, Hey, Todd, uh, DNA samples will determine if Jupiter residents aren't. Uh, DNA samples will determine if the Jupiter residents aren't picking up. Behind. Oh, <laughs> if you live in Jupiter, Florida, and your doggy's going doo doo on the ground, I guess the city council's there going to start doing DNA samples on doggy doo doo. Oh, my goodness. Got an email here from Brian. He says, Hey, Todd, backlash against Final Cut Pro X. Very funny. He's got a link to a YouTube video. I'll have that up in the show notes as well. Um, Social Wars, Google unveils Facebook competitor. Of course, we talked about it at the beginning of the show, Google+. Plus. Um, got an email here from Seth Todd. This is Seth from Michigan. I have a pocket cast for the Droid X2, and I use a search bar and search Geek News Central, and both audio and video options of the show came up. Same with Saturday Morning Tech Show. Also, I did not try to find it via category. So, for Pocket Cast, for the Droid, you can find Geek News Central. So thanks for that, Seth. And uh, But anyway, that's all we've got for comments on tonight's show. And boy, right at the right at the end here. Hey, geeknews at gmail.com. Geeknews at gmail.com. Oh, what was I doing here? Geeknews at gmail.com. Voicemail hotline 619-342-7365. Uh, sorry I left you looking at the screen here for the last five minutes, folks. Um, other than that, it's been a great show. I hope you enjoyed it. And uh, we'll see you in the next go around. Thanks so much. Take care. And aloha.